start again. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation to this nice dinner, wonderful dinner. Um, I first met Baron Persinoglu in Coral Gables in around 1970, uh, but I had heard his name. Uh, I was a student in Oxford in 1964, I was an undergraduate actually, when Baron started a series of conferences called the Coral Gables Conferences, which have, in a way have been running ever since. And these conferences became really world famous in the world of physics, uh, immediately starting in 1964. So he really put Coral Gables on the physics map of the world. And they were, it's no exaggeration to say that they were world famous because as a student in Oxford I knew about them and these books whose covers were shown by the previous speaker were well known to all the students and so on. And they, were, they, had, they contained talks by a lot of very famous physicists, the most famous in the world. For example, Gal-Man, Murray Gell-Mann uh, discovered quarks and uh, the Eightfold Way and that sort of thing in the early 60s. And Galman came to Coral Gables and gave lectures on it, and they were printed in his books. Uh, as was mentioned, the Baron was very influenced by meeting Albert Einstein uh, in 1953. That's very shortly before Einstein died, actually. I think he died in 1955, when I was only 11 years old, so I never met it was too early for me to meet him, so I never met Einstein. But Barron did, and uh, talked to him for, at great length, and apparently Einstein respected his work. And with that encouragement, uh, Barron continued to work on his version of a unified field theory combining gravity with the uh, other forces, which is what Einstein had attempted to do in the last um, 20 years of his life uh, to make a unified theory. Uh, now people do that in a slightly different way, but uh, Barham continued in that quest. So when he started these conferences, he was helped, as has already been mentioned by, for example, Sid Meshkoff, who is now 91 years old and is, was at the meeting this week, and Arnold Perlmutter, who died about a year ago. So uh, he did altogether 32 Coral Gables conferences from 1964 to 1986, and then there was a hiatus and he started again in 1995 until he died in 2003. <coughs> I actually knew him since 1970 but I got to know him much better in 1995 because I helped him to restart the conferences. In 2003, uh, Baron Krishnanoglu died in October 2003, about two months before the, the 32nd Coral Gables Conference, which happened to be de dedicated to me. It was a fesher for me, and so it ended up where it was partly a fisher for me and also a memorial for Durham himself. So it was a bit bittersweet. He was a, a very, uh, I would say, charismatic person. Uh, apart from anything else, he, as you can see in these pictures, he always wore, or usually wore, a large white Stetson hat and a white suit and he had a cane. And he had a great style. He was hard to uh, ignore if he was in the room. And um, he also knew not only Einstein, but he knew a lot of famous physicists in the 1950s, such as Erwin Schrodinger and Paul Dirac. I'll say a bit more in a moment about Paul Dirac and Werner Heisenberg and other people, and it was quite fascinating that he would talk about these famous physicists. Um, so that was uh, the end of his contribution. Now since 2004, 
until this year and beyond, there have been 15 more conferences, one of which ended yesterday, uh, and it's been run by Professor Kurtwright, who is here, and his wife, his, his able assistant. So, uh, <laughs> Joanne. So altogether there have now been 47 conferences in this series started in 1964. Um, now, I just, very since he has been mentioned, I mentioned this other physicist, uh, Paul Dirac, who was on these pictures, whom I also knew since 1965 in Oxford. Um, I first met him in 1965. He was my academic great-grandfather, and he, I mean, Barham, of course, was a great physicist. Dirac was a sort of giant in physics. He was uh, uh, one of the greatest physicists of the 20th century. And uh, the first time I met him, I was just starting to do research in Oxford, and there was a conference where he was at. And my advisor knew him and asked him to come and talk to me. I didn't know this, but he obviously suggested to Dirac my name and asked him to come and see me. And he came over to my amazement and said, I am Paul Dirac. And I said, I know, I am Paul Frampton. And he said, I know. <laughs> so I thought this was a sort of surreal first meeting. The last discussion I had with Dirac was in 1982 he died in 1984, and it was by telephone, and the, the reason for this discussion, he was in Tallahassee and I was in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The reason for the discussion was, apparently a magnetic monopole had been discovered in an experiment in California, which had been reported in Chapel Hill. The magnetic mo monopole was first suggested by Dirac in 1931, 51 years earlier, and the magazine Physics Today wanted me to get a quotation from Dirac to see what was his opinion, whether it was a, Dirac, a magnetic monopole, because it was a very convincing discovery to most of us. So I telephoned Dirac and he answered the phone and I told him about this discovery, which he was unaware of, and I asked him whether he would believe it was a magnetic monopole. And there was total silence on the phone for at least a whole minute. And I couldn't hear him breathing. Or He was 82 years old. And it occurred to me that he might have died or something. Because I couldn't hear anything. And then after a minute he came on the phone and he said, I'll believe it only if they bring me one in a bottle. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, that was my story of Iraq. So that's probably enough. Thank you. Thank you very much.